So, hello, JV. Hello. Uh, it's my pleasure to meet you here at WordCamp um, Paris um, for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, this is JB. Uh, he is the CEO of WP Rocket, of WP Media, and products uh, WP Rocket, Imagify, and coming soon, Rocket CDN. Exactly. Yeah. It's so it's nice to meet you here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. That's yeah, really thank you for pleasure. being here. <laughs> yeah, so it's five years since WP Rocket uh, hit uh, the market, right? Yep. And last year, you've done 2.6 million dollars of revenue. Yeah, for WP Rocket, yes. Yeah, that's a great number for the plugin. So, uh, what how did you do that actually? Yeah, a lot of work, I guess. Uh, now the first thing I, I would uh, I would say is uh, just to to give a bit of history because of yeah, course yeah. you don't uh, arrive to that numbers and to that result like like that and without work without a, a huge team and a great team um, and also without a huge market because uh, so WP Rocket is a caching plugin and everyone need uh, to have a faster website you know right. because better SEO, better traffic, and so people are really looking to improve their website. Yeah, but there are a lot of uh, like other options, exactly. free options. Exactly, free and really good options. The thing is we are uh, providing something a bit different because we choose since the beginning a premium model because we want to afford an excellent quality of service, uh, I mean the product, the plugin, but also providing an excellent uh, support because since you're a caching plugin, you know, you change everything on the website so and there might be conflicts it might be issue and uh, when a customer is using it and he's, he has an issue he won't be happy so our job is to make him happy even if he has an issue so basically it's to solve his issue and for that we need to have a great support and that, that's something I, I really believe that we have so uh, that helps uh, help us a lot of uh, having a lot of new customers. But the support for WP Rocket is not just support for WP Rocket, but for all cust all issues customers have. Right? Ex exactly. Yeah. Since uh, since a caching plugin is in the front of the website, everything yeah. goes through uh, the website. So it can be difficult for the support as well because every time a customer is having an issue, he can think uh, this is because of WP Rocket because since he installed WP Rocket, something has changed on his website. So he contacts us. Uh, so we have a lot uh, of tickets which is not directly related to WP Rocket, but we have to uh, to solve the solution also for them. Uh, but where are the boundaries of this port? I mean, you can go very, very far away from exactly. the project like this. Yeah, exactly. And especially on support, you know. Uh, so we really need to have a, a, a strict limit uh, mm. on the support to, I mean, as soon as it goes outside of WP Rocket, when it's not related to WP Rocket, we are very clear with our customers saying that, okay, this is not related to WP Rocket, we can't help you. However, we are always providing them a solution. We can say, hey, we, it's not our fault, just go away. So we, we don't solve directly the solution, but we give them uh, something for them in order to have a solution for them at the end. Yeah, and the um, WP Rocket blog has about, uh, I think, um, 500,000 visitors a month. Yeah. So this is a big work to do. Uh, this is to like um, lower the sport tickets to educate customers. Yeah. Or this is an acquisition channel. It's a little, it's, it's uh, multiple. Of course, uh, I mean, it's really both. Um, this is, uh, this is something we really implement lately is to really focus on content marketing and this has helped us so much on having uh, a much more new customers, much more new with new because we have invested a lot on creating uh, content and created great content. Uh, so of course this is for SEO, this is for having new visitors. Uh, which will maybe uh, become new customers for WP Rocket. But also we have a lot of um, content which is to educate them uh, about uh, performance because performance, you know, is something very complicated at the yeah. end. It can be, yeah, it's difficult, it's technical. And there are a lot of things where people think they know, which is not necessarily true. So we need to educate them a lot about, okay, should I use a CDN? What is minification? What is a bother cache? I heard that I should enable JZIP, but what is JZIP? Why is this? <laughs> so, so there are so many things that you can, 
you can have, and sometimes it's really complicated, especially with the tools, uh, which give you uh, performance feedback like page speed, like JetMetrics, because it's really global. So uh, they will say, okay, you don't have JZIP compression enabled, but if you look at the details, your website has JZIP compression enabled, but it's only because you are, for example, loading Google Analytics, which doesn't have JZIP, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a customer will think, okay, but I am, I have enabled the WP yeah, rocket and I don't have why is that? And yeah. Because they don't look at the details and it's not very easy to look at the details. So it's like a private patient consulting it all, every time? Yeah, most yeah. of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and how big the team is? Um, about support, about WP Rocket, about... About WP Rocket and support, uh, Yeah, so we have uh, 10 people uh, on the support and it's always growing because recently we have really a huge course uh, on WP Rocket, so we are growing a lot, uh, mm -hmm. our support team. Right now, at the time we are talking, we are hiring three, three new people for uh, coming uh, uh, on, the on the support, so it's going uh, to be bigger. Um, we have two developers working yeah. uh, on WP Rocket. We are also hiring new developers as well. Mm -hmm. We have two people working uh, on the product. Uh, we have one people working uh, really specifically on the marketing, and one on the affiliation, and one on the content. So, uh, as you might see, there are a lot of people and a lot of uh, people working on different uh, things like marketing, like development, like support. So it's really uh, a different kind of people and that's really interesting because it's great. Uh, something different and very unique uh, which comes into the world people. How do you like collect people, right people for you? How do you yeah. hire people? How do you know the people is right? Good question. It, it's really complicated. The, I mean, um, Hiring is one of the, the, the thing which is one of the most important, especially for my job, because you are creating a team and you need to have really the best uh, team player uh, to do great product and to have a great company. Um, we have uh, invested a lot into hiring. I mean, changing our hiring process, investing a lot of time, because at the beginning, uh, we were totally inexperienced uh, first uh, on running a company because that was our... You, you and Jonathan, you are developers originally, Yeah, right? most, Yeah, mostly developers and uh, even if we love uh, entrepreneurships, uh, it was really our first strong experience and we, we created just, you know, we're just a few people and then uh, we're a team of 20 people in like uh, three, four years, so you need to learn in a very fast way and there are so many things to learn because there is the products, there is management, there is hiring, development, so many things. Um, and at the beginning, we were mostly focusing on hiring people based on feeling, uh, which works. Uh, and we have been able to create a great team thanks to that. But um, were those friends? No, we, we, we didn't really hire friends. We, we hired people we knew most yeah. of the time, at the, especially on the beginning, and especially from people of the WordPress community, because that's a great community, yeah. and that's a great solution to find great people yeah. with have the, more or less the same mindset, the same uh, vision, and so that's really good. Um, but we were a bit more focused on hiring based on feelings and not based on uh, what did they do, how they really work, uh, because that's really what matters at the end. And of course, they should have uh, the same focus, the same vision as you. Uh, so we have recently changed the way we are hiring. So we have completely rewritten the, we written the, uh, our old process, uh, which is now a set of three interviews uh, with a lot of different people. And this is everything is written. And that's really working well. Uh, and we are really focused on the past, uh, on the people who are hiring, what they how did they do on their previous job? How did they react on specific situation? Because, you know, usually we were asking, okay, if you have this situation, how would you react? And they were giving a great answer. But the truth is, yeah. if you never expect like something... Like imaginary situations. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now we are really focused on situation which has existed for this candidate. Is On this situation, how did you react? Uh, which is much more better than asking, how would you react? Uh, because of course they would gi they would give a perfect theoretical yeah, solution. Yeah, you know, you know what chance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, But in fact, how do how did you do when it really happens? And with that, it helps us a lot on finding yeah the, the good candidates. Um, and the thing is, we are totally remote, so it helps so much on creating great team because you are not limited geographically. You know, you can hire great people 
uh, from US, from Canada, from Colombia, from Spain, from so many countries. I mean, all the countries, and that's really great, and that's great a unique team, and that's I, I will love it. Yeah, you said you have uh, you have to learn a lot of things. What was your channel of learning mostly? Uh, I, I would say experience, because I mean. Yeah. You know, you are directly into it, mm -hmm. uh, and most of the time you don't necessarily have time to okay to read books and to see how it's working. You just uh, you are confronted to the new thing. So yeah. okay, let's do it, and of course you will fail, and we have failed so many times, but you are learning, and this is yeah. I would say this is how we learn by failing. You know, and I think uh, and Jonathan and me, my my co-founder, we are quite. Uh, lucky to have some good guts, you know, to, to some good, most of the time we have good feelings, which uh, seems to be good, and that helps us a lot uh, of having good solution. Of course, we fail, but we learn. But speaking about fails, what were the, like, the wrong decisions you remember? So many. Oh, but, like, name the few the most. Uh, the, I think there is a something quite common in an uh, entrepreneur is uh, we are strongly positive and we have the tendency of forget uh, what was bad. So I won't give you so many answers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember a few technical things, but what I would say uh, the, the, biggest, uh, e uh, the biggest mistake we did uh, was to try to do too many things. Mm. Uh, because at the beginning, so we created WP Rocket and then uh, we created Imagify and we have been in a way successful uh, in both and we say okay that seems quite easy to create successful products uh, that would yeah. be great if we could do so many other products so yeah. uh, let's try a security plugin and also we hire people to create themes mm -hmm. themes and you know we were too many distracted you we tried to do too many things and at the end we lose what we really know what we it was performance and that's what we know what we are really good at so Uh, like one years ago or two years ago, we really decided to uh, focus on what we are good, which is performance. And so we stay on performance and we do WP Rocket, Imagify, our image, image uh, optimization service. Uh, and in the next, some other product, but which will be very focused on performance mm -hmm. and to not do so many things. And, you know, when you have, uh, even if you have only one product, you can do so many things to improve it, yeah. the product, the supports, the marketing so but uh, you have the uh, like transport roadmap like uh, github issues everything is like open yeah. uh, this is where you will get the ideas how to develop wp rocket from customers from from where yes um yeah so, so we we can talk a bit, a bit more about transparency yeah and, yeah that's uh, very interesting because the company has everything open like numbers salaries like everything yeah Not many companies do that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, to, to give you a bit more context about why we did that. So um, we have been very lucky to learn. Uh, we, can, we are back on the learning. Thanks to other companies, which was sharing things like uh, uh, Buffer, like uh, all the friends I knew, uh, like um, Bear Metrics. They were sharing everything and uh, like the way they were hiring. and. We, we took that. Uh, we said, oh, that's great. We are learning and let's, it, it seems to work. Let's do the same. Um, at the beginning, it was not transparent. And at the point we say, okay, we have been able to, to gain so many value because of uh, companies who have shared things. Let's do the same. I mean, we have, uh, we have learned so many things uh, and that could be really great if we can. Was it too give... easy decision just to open everything? Yeah, I mean, there is no reason to hide things. Um, I believe that if more people would be transparent, that would help so many things. And, uh, and uh, it, it's important to be transparent for a good reason. And our reason is uh, based on the more information you have as an employee, as, as everything, uh, the, the, the easiest it would be to take the good decision. Because usually good, bad decisions come because you don't have enough information. So we share the more information in order to people Uh, to take uh, the good decision. And so it helps us internally, but externally, especially uh, on support, for example, when people were saying, hey, you are doing something bad. And we, share, we say, okay, look, we are sharing everything. So if you want to 
to, co to, to share your negative feedback on WP Rocket, please do. Look, everyone is doing and we are sharing everything. So we, we really don't have issue with that. Um, and I believe this is something very strong because with, uh, you know, the more uh, social networks, the more visibility, now there are a lot of customers when they don't have what they want, they will say, hey, if you don't give me that, I will publish on Twitter or Facebook that you're a bad company and that everything is bad and it's really... Yeah, company often get scared to, about this exactly. and want to hide these things and keep them private and make everything not to go this out of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and our, our vision is that, uh, and it works most of the time, is, okay, do, please do it, please share. I uh, would we'd be very happy to see what you say and to answer uh, objectively since we are sharing everything. And most of the time, uh, it's really, really effective because they don't expect that. But most of the time, when you say that to companies, they execute because they are afraid of bad, um, of bad, uh, of bad content. And we are not because I mean, when every everything is shared, there is no no issue with that. Yeah. So this was one of the. Right decisions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of right decisions we've been able to take. Yeah, uh, I checked uh, like Google Trends for WP Rocket, yeah. and there were kind of three, um, three like um, crucial points, like uh, t turning points. Uh, I think it was uh, March tw uh, 2014 and then end of um, 2016 and end yeah. of 2018. What happened then? How how the graphics go like these? Yeah. Some magics, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of magic is that? Yeah. Um, so to 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 go back to the to the beginning of the WP yeah. Um we started uh, in France, as you can see with my strong accent. I'm French. Um, and when we when we launched WP Rocket, we really wanted to launch it only in France because we knew that. Um, our product was really small, was really not perfect, and uh, so you saw yourself as a local company. N not necessarily. We 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 knew that uh, U.S. people, but uh, let's say uh, international market would be more, would wait more uh, from a caching plugin, like mm -hmm. more features. And we at the beginning we really didn't have any big features, just caching basically and minification. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted also more important to to try. And it was to, to be the fastest, it was really easier for us to just have a French website, uh, a French communication, um, French support. So we say, okay, let's do everything in France. And, and it was really a side project at the beginning. So we didn't want to invest so many things. So we say, we say, okay, let's try in France. Yeah. Uh, so it was at the, at the beginning and the revenue was okay. We were doing like 5,000 per month, which was really Wonderful for us. We were, we were the first surprise, but it was but really. But you never put stripped. Yeah. Yeah. No investigation. No. Never. No. So it was it was great, but it was really flat. And at at a point we say, okay, we we see it's 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 it it's get some revenue, but if we want to 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 be full time on it, we need more because with five thousand. Uh, with you into a company, you don't pay a lot of things and you don't pay salary. Uh, so we said, okay, let's. Let's go international now. We have uh, improved our product. We have collected so many feedback from our users. Uh, let's translate our website and let's uh, communicate uh, outside the world. And that's what we did. And slowly, slowly, it's, uh, it became more and more uh, famous. And that's where the peak... The international and... community as well. Exactly. That's yeah. where the growing comes from because we, we started also to have uh, feedback from big... Um, big websites uh, like WP Tower and White uh, and that's and that that uh, brings us a lot of new customers. And since our products were great and our support were great, it was like snowball. You know, the more customers you have, the more recommendation you have, and it's getting bigger and bigger. So this is a this was a, really the first peak and the first huge growth was simply because we translated our website and we really communicate uh, internationally. So first it was a really good product, yes. then it was translation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and what next? What next? So we on the on the um, on the beginning we focused so much on the product. Yeah. Uh, product and supports because that was really the core of what we wanted to do, and we were really. Is good it at. how it goes now as well? Yes, but with a new thing which is marketing. Oh, okay. Uh, much more. Um, so our growth at the beginning and since like one year ago was focused on just recommendations, supports. 
uh, but also contacting like a press relationship, you know, yeah. PR. Uh, we were contacting so many bloggers to, to simply say, hey, this is, we are WP Rocket, we do that. If you want to try, I can provide you a license. And if you like it, that we would be so happy to have a blog post. Yeah. Uh, and this works so well. Um, but at a point, and this was last year, in the last two years, uh, we were really at the top of the revenue. We, we saw that we were doing uh, $200,000 per month, uh, but it was not growing that much. Uh, and so we really decided, since our product was better, and I mean, everything was well organized, to really invest into marketing. Uh, so Did you have any marketing uh, strategy before? It was, but not. We were like really focused on product, and the marketing was minority. And we really focused on our existing customers to have good retention, to have a lot of renewal upgrades, and to create the best product. Uh, and the thing is, we were not expert at all on marketing, so we were doing ourselves, but not necessarily good. So uh, we really decided to to invest into it. Uh, so we uh, hired a few profiles, like someone to manage. Um, our affiliate program, someone to manage all uh, our marketing and also someone to uh, write the content and starting to that, of course, after a few months, because you know, there's a time uh, people come to your company and, and start working. And a few months after that, we have seen so many great results about that and we have like doubled the, the revenue. So what part of the revenue marketing costs, what part of revenue they take right now? Mm, it's it's complicated. I mean, that's something we don't really calculate and want to calculate because it's always difficult to. I mean, you you can to calculate the return of investment. You mean? Yeah, I mean, you you can know how many specific action mm -hmm, could, mm -hmm. could uh, bring you in terms of revenue, like adwords, like Facebook ads. But I mean, all the the marketing investment is really complicated to measure and. Uh, at the end, to know which action, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, because so, you see the tweet on Twitter, then you see ad on Facebook, yeah. and then suddenly you find out that you are reading the blog post, and um, that's how. Okay, so what are the channels mainly? Yeah, um, the affiliate program is is really big, and it's bringing a, a lot of new customers. I was contacting WP Rocket maybe a few years ago, asking if you guys have uh, yeah. a affiliate program, uh, but uh, you didn't. At the time, we, we didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. want to have, and we didn't. Yeah, uh, why did you decide? What persuaded you? Um, we, I mean, we. At the beginning, people were providing feedback and were promoting WP Rocket for free yeah. uh, because the product was excellent. Yeah. It's still excellent, but but we really wanted to uh, uh, help these people to promote it, uh, WP Rocket more, and to have new people who were able to promote uh, WP Rocket. So that's why we decided to have um, this program, and this worked very well. And sometimes I don't like personally affiliate program because uh, people are recommending things um, not because it's a good product, but just because they are going to earn money. Uh, but since I strongly believe that WP Rocket is a great product, which helps the customers and all our customers, let's say most of our customers are really happy about that and we have so many great feedback about yeah. that. I mean, it's really good to have uh, an affiliate program to things uh, so people who are recommending. Uh, WP Rocket. Yeah, it, and uh, it's just another good reason to write like a blog post instead of a short tweet. Yeah. You can tweet like, oh, WP Rocket, you made my website faster three times. But if you uh, enter a uh, uh, affiliate program, there yeah. is a good reason for you to like write a blog post, to make screenshots, to like exactly. move the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and to have, you know, partnerships with yeah. uh, all the plugins, with the hosting, it helps so much to have an affiliate program because you have something to to give to them. Yeah. Um, so affiliate program a lot, uh, of course a lot of SEO, we are writing a huge amount of content. Um, uh, on WP Rocket blog or guest posts? No, mostly on WP Rocket blog, mm -hmm. uh, plus on our website we create uh, uh, new content. Uh, mm -hmm. We do AdWords, uh, we, do, we are experimenting uh, Facebook ads mm -hmm. uh, a lot and of course all our work with our customers pays uh, because we are providing them a great product and great reports and they are recommending us. Uh, so basically what uh, WP Media is selling, it's not product itself, right? It's support 
Exactly. What we, when, especially with WP Rocket, uh, which, is, which is GPL, what we are selling is simply the support and the update. Uh, yeah. The product is free and it's on our, uh, it's on publicly on GitHub, so you can directly download WP Rocket. Yeah, but to get support and to get updates, that's what you are selling, right? Exactly. And uh, of course, since we are, we have external services. Um, like a critical pass CSS generator, uh, we need to be linked uh, to the website. So we are selling also that all the service related to the WP Rocket. Um, speaking about pricing models, it was from the beginning that WP Rocket will be premium plugin, no freemium model, no free version at all. It was from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. Uh, so fir first reason was to 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 know that we didn't want it to do free a free plugin. Yeah. Why? Because we wanted really to put something, to, to create something great. Um, and to do that, we need time. Uh, and for that, we need money. So we need, really needed to focus uh, time, to, to focus on development and support. And for that, you need to pay. So we wanted uh, to get directly money from customers in order to, to create them a great product. Yeah. Do you remember the first purchase? Uh, yes, believe. Yeah. I don't remember the name, but uh, I, I remember, I mean, we were like refreshing all the time, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm appreciate it, so that's really nice. Um, and um, the question about uh, freemium is yeah. interesting. Um, we, we really thought about that, why not doing a freemium yeah. plugin? For us, it's really, it, it's, it's our opinion, it's, it's not worth it. For, cash, for a caching plugin uh, to do a freemium model, uh, because the, what will have the most impact uh, on the performance is uh, create a static cache. Okay. You know? And everything will be, uh, of course, better with less load, with minification, with all the kind of stuff. But the main impact is static. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, which means that if you want to do freemium, you need to put uh, free the static cache. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't have you won't have really great value. So now it brings you to the paid features. Yeah, that won't yeah, bring which that won't much, bring that much, much impact. Yeah, like let's say ten or twenty percent. Uh, and so be, about that. exactly, yeah. uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. And this, of course, is great uh, to have a free model. Creates a lot of usage, a lot of support. <coughs> we really mm. wanted to for providing great uh, support, mm. uh, which is for us possible. Uh, since we have a, a premium model, so yeah, yeah. Uh, but speaking about support, uh, you are providing support right now in French and in English, right? Yes. But there were different languages before, right? Yes, we were providing. We were providing by by randomly in, in a way, uh, and that was one some mistakes uh, we did, I believe, is. Um, so we are working remotely, and we hired people from all the, all around the world. And uh, one day we hired a German guy, okay. and he said, "Hey, I can speak German." So we say, "Oh, let's do That's German cool. support." Yeah, yeah, and and people were really happy. I mean, to to, to create a ticket in German and to mm -hmm. have an answer in German. You already have some customers from Germany, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we did the same uh, with someone who were speaking Spanish mm -hmm. uh, and Italian. Uh, that was really good, but at the end, that doesn't really enter into a strategy and. Um, and something we can really afford because uh, when uh, the German guy is leaving uh, for holidays, you mm -hmm. don't have any more German supports. Yeah. Uh, Italian the same. And that's really complicated and that brings so much uh, difficulties to manage multiple languages, especially at the end for a small company like us. Uh, so that's why at the end we decided to remove these languages and to do only supports in English and French. But you kept the French. Yeah, because it's uh, we. I mean, we created WP Rocket in France. Uh, we have used people. People are used to create to uh, to submit uh, tickets in French. It's kind of native here, right? Yeah, exactly. And French people don't necessarily talk very well English. And uh, I mean, a lot of uh, recommendation we had uh, on uh, French blog posts. Where they were saying, okay, and they have a French support, and this is a. Huge I see. Plus. So people expect to have support in French. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why right for now we 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 still do uh, French tickets. Yeah, but you still target ma uh, markets that don't speak English. I, I mean, that speak different languages, yeah. right? Uh, like yeah. Spanish, Portuguese, uh, South America. Yeah, right? every target, every 
all around the world. I mean, we and that's a good thing. We don't have a specific country as a target. Of course, US is the biggest market. So this is the biggest market. Yeah, of course. And so we are targeting more US because if you target them, you know that you are going to touch more people directly instead of doing small countries. What about other English-speaking countries? I mean, Canada, UK, yeah, Australia, it's, it's, are they big markets as well? Yeah, they are big markets, but smaller than US, so... Yeah, so US, uh, how, um, what part of all customers, US customers, represent? Yeah, unless, uh, yeah, I think if I remember the, the numbers, it's about 30% of 30%. our customers uh, are, are from the US. Okay, and what, what kind of customer is typical customer for for the world market? That's a good and the bad thing. That's a good and the bad, the bad thing. Um, because it's basically any WordPress user, uh, any people who has a website. Uh, and that the good thing, and the thing I love with WordPress is you can have like the local restaurant uh, who has his own website, the blogger, the photographer, or the huge agency, or the, the big government That's website. All that forms our community. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so but, our, these are our customers. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there some like typical, like typical image of a customer for the WordPress? Yeah, of course, kind of. You know, you are, we have the bloggers which is going to a niche, uh, we have uh, uh, the agencies, we have uh, hosting, so different kind of customers uh, which will uh, buy different kind of licenses, mm -hmm. uh, for example the restaurant uh, we know, uh, which is not very techy, will we'll buy a single license for its own website and will need a lot of uh, support and help. Uh, when uh, the developers when will buy more unlimited licenses and are more techy, so it will be much more easier for them. But we don't really focus on specific people oh. um, because there are so many differences and that doesn't really worth it. Mm -hmm. I see. So we focus on WordPress users. Yeah, just WordPress users. Yeah. Um, speaking about marketing, I just remembered that we're here at uh, WordCamp Paris and you're sponsoring. Yep. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, uh, how do you feel about sponsoring WordCamps? Uh, does it bring any revenue to company or is it just like, uh, like giving away? Yeah. Uh, good question. So we experimented a lot about that, uh, especially at the beginning when we uh, we wanted to to be known outside of France. So, mm -hmm. so to to do that, we sponsored uh, WordCamp. Uh, from our uh, feedback and from our stats, we have seen that um, in terms of revenue for us, it, it didn't uh, really worth it mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's um, the way we sponsor is is big in a way because we take we always. I prefer to take one of the biggest um, sponsorship, which allow us to have a table when we can talk to, to people, visible, we can show exactly, uh -huh. yeah, and to 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 be able to talk with customers and uh -huh. to talk with people to explain them uh, because usually it's something technical and complicated for them, and mm -hmm. so it's important to to show them. Um, and we have seen that it's quite costly because you have the sponsor. Uh, you, you you need to, to bring the team, you, you have to pay the hotel, so it's really a, a big budget. And at the end, if you can have like five, six customers, it's quite big. Oh. Um, and for um, for business like us, mm -hmm. where uh, the cost is not very expensive uh, by year, you know, so the, the revenue per user is not big, uh, investing multiple thousands of dollars to, to have Five customers is really not uh, a good solution. There yeah. are much more better way uh, to invest money if you want really uh, return on investment in mm -hmm, terms of customers. Mm -hmm. um, and we try in, in different in different countries. Um, so that's the feedback for us. Yeah, it did. It doesn't work uh, for other companies. It can work very well, mm -hmm. uh, especially for hosting. Uh, I have a lot of examples where some hosting were really not known from the WordPress community and then invest a lot on all the French World Cup and now they are really a reference uh, in the WordPress community. That's because they invested. Uh, so to, to be known, it's really, uh, it can be useful. So um, we, we love WordPress, we love WordPress community and we have so many things to give it back because we are living, we're creating a, a company thanks to WordPress. Yeah. So that's quite crazy if you think that something free, something open source and we are living, we have like 20 people living thanks to thanks to that. Uh, so we have decided that we, we sponsor all the French 
uh, web camps. Mm -hmm. uh, just in order to give to give back, we know that it's not going to bring us customers, but uh, we 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 sponsor every French uh, web camps. Um, it was a solution of facility uh, because a lot of web camps are contacting us. Uh, to sponsor and sometimes we will say yes yeah, so or it seems like a nice hot camp. It was difficult to choose and at the end to say no and the we to explain the reason. So we decided to only sponsor French. Yeah. And now it's really clear and if people are asking we said no we, we sponsor only French hot camp. Yeah I see. Uh, but now after Double Rocket is five years old. Yeah. Uh, if you a know, big baby now. Yeah big baby. Uh, if you know all this story before, what would you change in your strategy in marketing and hiring process? I mean, in development model. I I think I would change nothing because um, we you know we never know if you if you change thing maybe that would have I mean it's like butterfly effect you know you you, uh, you I guess you have seen the movie you yeah sure <laughs> you, you change one thing but you change everything so. I mean, with with the result we have today, I'm extremely happy with what we have been able to build, uh, with the great customers, with the, the great team, with I mean, with everything. So I, I wouldn't change anything because you you don't know the impact, and even if we fail things, mm -hmm. we have been able to we have learned mm -hmm. so much about that. So yeah, I would keep like the same. Yeah, you said that in the beginning there was so uh, you made double broken, then you made magify, then you made something else, yeah. and now it wasn't like a correct decision th that time to yeah. spread uh, yeah. between different uh, directions. But now Imagify is developing as well, and you are preparing another product. Yes. By Double Media is Rocket CDM, right? Exactly. So this is your strategy for the future. Yeah, our strategy is really to focus on performance and yeah. to find um, pain points uh, for users, which is difficult for them. They don't necessarily understand. To target the same user users, exactly. but with different products, right? Exactly. Yeah. We don't really to target the same users, performance. Uh, and uh, with WP Rocket, we really want to make performance easy mm. um, and understandable. And I mean, you enable WP Rocket, it's, it's working yeah. most of the time. <laughs> um, and we, we, we build Imagify things to the feedback of our customers. They're saying, oh, what kind of, how can I optimize my images? Uh, I don't like what, what exists. And we say we looked a little bit to the other product. They're really good, but we wanted to to do something a bit different. So we say, okay, give us six months and we'll provide you something. And we provide them Imagify, and today we optimize more than one million of images per day. Uh, so it's working pretty well. Um, and we are preparing to 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 release a work at CDN mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we see that people don't necessarily understand CDN and it can be complicated for them to have a CDN on their own website. It can be complicated even for developers. Yeah, even for developers. I mean, you need to register to an external service, create a CNM and then modify your DNS and then, I mean, configure it because by default uh, the, the performance is not necessarily good because they, they disable everything uh, and then add it into your plugin which handles CDN. What we want to provide is one click solution for CDN. So directly from WP Work and they enable the CDN in that sort. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like logical after we've seen WP Rocket. Imagify, it's logical, but sounds really cool. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> TV, thank you very much for this interview, for this information. And so I'm so honored to be here to talk to you. And I'm a fan of W Rocket since I don't know, maybe 2016, 2015. And I'm I'm working in W Rocket actually. And I can like prove that it's a, a great place to work, a great place to be um with team and uh, a nice place to be a custom, nice company to be in a customer. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much.